What's going on? Welcome to View the Right Thing. And this moment that you're seeing right now has got to be a sweet moment for Klay Thompson, right? After missing multiple years due to freak injuries, he won the NBA championship and Klay was just named the ESPN Best Comeback Athlete of the Year. And this SB is well deserved. See, back in 2019, while en route to its fourth ring, Thompson tore his ACL in his left knee during game six of the finals against the Raptors. Showing all of his heart, Klay runs back out there to make his free throws. But after that, he was done, and so were the Warriors. Even worse, Clay wouldn't play basketball for more than two years because in the fall of 2020, fate decided to take a swipe at his Achilles too. So to go from that to this is a hell of a comeback. But just how hellacious are we talking here? And is it the greatest NBA comeback from injury of all time? Well, I'm glad you asked, because that's exactly what we're getting into today. Now, when it comes to types of comebacks in the NBA, there's really two different speeds, single game and returning from a stretch. And while Willis Reed gets respect for playing on a bum ankle in game seven of the 70s finals, my man only scored two buckets, which means that inspirational as he might be, he could take the finals MVP and that year's title as consolation because when it comes to the greatest single game comeback from injury of all time, it's hard to find a quarter of basketball more heroic than Isaiah Thomas and his ankle game in the 88 NBA Finals. So look, it's game six of the series and the Pistons are against the Lakers. Isaiah's team is up 3-2 and he's scoring at will. That is until he rolls his ankle and rolls himself up out of the game. Now in most universes, that should have been the end of it. But in this one, in the third quarter, a visibly hobbled Thomas re-enters the game and goes ballistic. He scores 25 points on basically one leg and threw down a performance that was a sketchy whistle or two away from earning his third championship. But that didn't happen. And the lack of Isaiah's story ending with a ring is what keeps it from being the greatest injury comeback of all time. Also, as amazing as performances like Isaiah's and Willis's are, the single game comebacks have to take a back seat to the season ending ones, right? I mean, those are the type of injuries that get you written off by fans and media alike. Something that Bernard King could speak to in 85 when the Knicks lost arguably their best player for the entire season to another ACL injury. And even though King shocked the world by returning with an altered game that was just as devastating as the one that was stolen, it didn't lead him or the Knicks to the title. So again, that keeps comebacks like his and Amari Stoudemire and Derrick Rose from reaching the top tier. Channing Fry came back from a lost season due to an enlarged heart and eventually rehabbed his way to a ring with LeBron James and the Cavs, so that definitely bears mentioning, but he's not alone there. In fact, Clay had a teammate who could say the same. After suffering an injury so heinous that it could have cost him his leg, Sean Livingston became an important piece in not one, but three championship runs for the Golden State Warriors. But as incredible as Sean's comeback was, it still doesn't compare to Clay's, and not just because four rings are more than three, but simply because what Clay Thompson accomplished is basically unprecedented. Sean was injured in 07, and he didn't win that first chip for another eight years. Klay Thompson missed two complete seasons and capped off his return with another title. Also, when you think about where they were in their careers when the injuries occurred, Sean's injury was like being thrown into a deep, dark valley, while Klay's was like being thrown from the mountaintop. When Sean Livingston went down, he was still relatively new to the league, but when Klay Thompson got hurt, he already had the record for most points in a quarter. He was already a future first ballot hall of Famer. Clay was already a member of the Golden State Death Star roster that rivaled the 96 Bulls. Thompson was already a three-ring splash brother, and he was primed to put another one on his pinky. That is, until the worst happened, and then it happened again. And when it did, the victims of the Warriors' dominance instantly became its doubters, and many openly questioned if Clay could ever be Clay again. And if Clay couldn't be Clay, then the Warriors couldn't be the Warriors because while Steph Curry is the star and Draymond Green is the heart, Clay Thompson is the straw that stirs the drink. With him, they'd compete for titles. Without him, they bottom out from the playoffs. Early in his career, Clay Thompson had to work his way past the doubters to reach the pinnacle of the NBA. And when he got there, he got knocked back down. And then when he tried to get back up, he got set back again. At that time, had he tapped his trophy case and tapped out while waving from the deck of his boat to the NBA world, I doubt anyone would have faulted. But he didn't. 
He just slapped back on his headband and got back out there and threw down the greatest single comeback the sport has ever seen. And you gotta love that, right? I mean, everyone loves a good comeback. Thanks for watching View the Right Thing. If you like the content, hit that membership button. Join us, leave a like, leave a subscribe, leave a comment. All of those really help the channel grow. Peace.